What is going on guys, it is JJ here back with another FIFA U20 World Cup reaction. This one to the Argentina versus South Africa matchup. This is in Group F, the final group. Just earlier in today in Group F, Portugal got started with a victory over the South Korean U20 squad off of a beautifully worked goal in the 7th minute. And then a lot of defensive play afterwards. And this game was the exact opposite of that. A combined... 39 shots between both teams in this contest, 7 coming from South Africa who unfortunately had to play a man down for about the last 20-30 minutes uh, of this contest which made it really really difficult considering for the most part I felt like South Africa were ready for what was a shootout uh, against a very very experienced Argentinian squad. Uh, Ezekiel Barco, the Atlanta United, I, I want to say attacking midfielder more than he is a striker or a winger, uh, was absolutely scintillating in this contest, getting goals in the 63rd, 63rd or 64th minute, and then he also had a penalty uh, as well. So a brace for Ezekiel Barco in this contest to add to another three goals that Argentina would go on to score, and they would take the victory 5-2. to two. Now, realistically, this game was kind of odd. I mean, there weren't, there were not a lot of stoppages. There weren't a lot of fouls, realistically. There was, there was a couple of hard ones uh, overall, but at the same time, this Argentina squad itself it feels like from top to bottom, attacking-wise, Argentina as a country produces some of the world's best talent. I mean, obviously, you got to start with Lionel Messi, then you have the likes of Icardi, Aguero, Gonzalo Higuain in his prime, Dybala, and it just continues to flow on Angel Correa, uh, Manuel Lanzini, and it just, it just, it snowballs, it snowballs. And... This is a tournament specifically that Lionel Messi made his name in uh, when he was a U20 for, for Argentina, when he finally decided to represent Argentina after his Barcelona debut. And it, you maybe see, not hints of Lionel Messi, but hints of... of Oh, my bad there. Uh, hints of what could be the next Argentinian star in Ezequiel Barco, uh, who had an absolutely wonderful game, I feel like, from midfield. As well, shoutouts for Julian Alvarez, who also was able to get on the scoreboard, and of course, Fausto Rivera, uh, who I thought was actually very, very good, got Argentina on the scoreboard first in this contest before the red card, but all props to South Africa, I feel like, in this contest, especially from the U20 standpoint. South Africa, they've been trying very, very hard to sort of revamp their youth program, sort of build towards the future, you know, so they can represent themselves better in things like the African Cup of Nations and obviously in the World Cup. And South Africa, I thought, did a very, very good job to get started in this contest. They weren't shying away in playing sort of a back defensive line like most teams are, like South Korea did, for example, in the contest against Portugal where they played in the 5-3-2 and at times it looked like they had about nine, ten guys behind the ball, where South Africa in this game, they were willing to go after it, and they were willing to sit on the counterattack and wait for it. I mean, South Africa did not have anywhere near as much possession. I think maybe 35, 30% of the total possession of the contest, but at the same time, they were still able to score two goals, one of those being a penalty, while also having 10 men for about the last 20 to 30 minutes of the contest. Keenan Phillips, who scored the first goal for South Africa, did not maybe think of the best, you know, decision making. Getting his red card in the sixth, I can't remember. It, it, it was in the 60, between 60th and 70th minute, him getting his red card. And it was just the end, I feel like, after that. I don't know how many how many goals did they score after. They Three goals Argentina had after that. So, I mean, all things considered, South Africa represented themselves really, really well in this contest. It was just an unlucky uh, event overall for them to be losing so much in the first contest um, against Argentina. But Argentina now moved to the top of Group F, topping Portugal on goal difference. They moved to three points, top of Group F, Portugal in second. Uh, looks like it's going to be South Korea in third, and then... And obviously, South Africa due to goal difference in fourth. But the South African team, they have nothing to hang their heads down on. I thought it was a fantastic game for them in terms of attacking-wise, playing on the counter-attack, and trying to play through a much more tactically astute Argentina squad. But... Of course, South Africa, they still have the games against South Korea and against Portugal, so a lot of opportunity to improve and a lot of opportunity to battle back. So you guys should let me know your thoughts on the contest down in the comments below. The FIFA U20 World Cup, the first weekend is, is slowly getting to a close. We're slowly coming to the ending uh, of match week one, or rather, group, groups match day one. Uh, I believe match day twos will start tomorrow, so it's going to be it's going to be a really, really quick process uh, in terms of completing the group stage matches of the FIFA U20 
World Cup because obviously the Euros U21 are coming up this summer and obviously all of the international tournaments. I'm counting about nine or ten international tournaments going on in this summer. So there's a lot of football yet to be played, uh, not only in this tournament but e elsewhere as well. So you guys should let me know your thoughts on the Argentina U20 versus South Africa U20 match down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and peace.